NC State two days away. Over 45,000 tickets sold in the Dome as of our recording of this. That makes me pretty excited for this Saturday uh, inside the JMA Wireless Dome. We're going to talk about NC State and everything that they bring to the table with or without Devin Leary. It's all on Lockdown Syracuse. It's all right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine, on your Thursday episode. We're happy to be with you, and thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more prop shots and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, we're talking NC State football. Syracuse 5-0, 18th in the nation. NC State not 5-0. 15th in the nation coming to the dome coming to su's turf this has been i mean everything that syracuse has wanted in a homestand to begin the year minus uconn of course um mm-hmm. and that it wasn't a road or it was a, a road game um they welcome an nc state team that is good they have played really tough competition this year tougher than syracuse has and they've won some games uh that People probably didn't think they were going to win, and they lost some games that people thought they were going to lose. Um, So NC State, eh, I mean, unless you count last year, or unless you count last week's Florida State game, all of their wins have been expected, so scratch that. Uh, But they lose by 10 to Clemson, and NC State coming to this uh, Syracuse game, I think they're more worried about Syracuse than they were Clemson. Wasn't that a quote? Was it? I'm pretty sure I heard that somewhere. I thought you told me that. Oh, I, I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the guys, I went on a, an NC State podcast on Sunday night, and they told me that mentally this game was way more worrisome than the Clemson game even was for them. And that's just, I guess, is a nod to to how important this game is for NC State and to, you know, the 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 way other teams are looking at Syracuse right now, even if the the strength of schedule isn't all too high. And there are still some question marks around how good Syracuse football actually is. Um, but to be, you know, to hear that and understand that that's sort of the mentality and the pressure that NC State is walking into this game with, a huge opportunity for them and a really huge road game for them. And, and so there is a lot of pressure on their shoulders to come in and get a win and play a solid game because of sort of where the season falls for them. Yes, you lost a game to Clemson if you're NC State, but you've got a little bit of momentum right now. You came back, I believe they were about 17-3 against Florida State last week. You come back with your backup quarterback uh, and have a, a really fun, gritty win where you know it came down to that last drive. You can say they won because Mike Norvell should not have thrown the ball there, um, but whatever it was, you know, Florida State, throws the ball, NC State's defense comes up with an interception, seals the deal, wins that football game. That's a game that, you know, to go back to that podcast that I was on, they talked about in years past, that's a game that they lose. Same situation, they don't quite grit it out. Uh, so they're talking about how there's a lot of momentum to to build off of the fact that this time around and so far this season, they've been on the right side of those games. And we'll talk about that impressive defense in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the biggest story uh, in North Carolina or in NC State's uh, sphere right now, which is Devin Leary being injured. Leary, who came into this season as one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC, one of the best quarterbacks in the country uh, on a lot of people's boards, a really, really talented player. Uh, who's got a really, really talented offense around him, even more so last year when he had a first-round pick and Ikem Aquanu blocking for him and four guys coming back on that offensive line this year. He gets hurt in that game, like you mentioned, against FSU. Jack Chambers has to come in. Uh, there is not much of an update on whether or not he'll be back for this Syracuse game. Dave Doran playing his cards close to his chest, as he should and as Dino would as well and any smart coach would 
Um, he said that he could be back this week or it could be six weeks and that he's super tough and he'll grind. I don't, I mean, nobody knows what to make of that. Of course, that's just coach speak. But if I had to guess, I think Syracuse, ah, you know, I don't really know who they're going to play on Saturday, but I will say, I think they can beat whoever NC state throws out there, whether it's Leary or whether it's chambers. If you want the numbers on both the guys, Leary this season has been good. Once again, a completion percentage above 60%, over 1,200 yards through the air, 11 touchdowns to just four interceptions. He's been that guy once again uh, with a receiving core that once again is really solid, led by Thayer Thomas, who has over 300 yards on the season and a couple touchdowns. Um, For Chambers this year, he hasn't done much, of course, but we know that he played four really solid seasons Uh, at Charleston Southern and that he's a scrambler and that he can move and that he's a different kind of quarterback than Devin Leary is. What do you see here, Owen? Are you worried about Jack Chambers? Are you happy that Syracuse will be playing a guy that not isn't, isn't necessarily so strong through the air, but more on his, uh, on the ground. So the way I see this and and I, I hear, you know, as you look at the coach talk, and based on that timeline, I don't expect Devin Leary to play in this game. If I were to to make a prediction and come out and say that, I assume that Syracuse is playing against Jack Chambers this week, uh, and, and that does present a different a different look, right? Leary is much more of a pocket passer, uh, has that arm strength, and Chambers can throw the ball definitely, but is a lot more mobile, and that is going to be, you know, a different task for Syracuse and something that. They've seen a little bit, but but not all too much. You know, you go back to to thinking about that game against Louisville with Malik Cunningham, who's incredibly mobile, and Syracuse was able to to hold him in check pretty solid throughout yep. the entirety of that game. Yes, he had a, he was able to scramble a couple of times and, and get outside and get some first downs. But, but you for the most that. part, Syracuse had him locked up, and, and I think that if you had Cunningham locked up, then Chambers' mobility is something that you're going to have to focus on but I'm not terrified of by any means. I think the the worry for me is that it is difficult in that you've had two weeks to prep for this game. And I'm not saying your entire bye week is focused on NC State. Obviously, right, this is a brand new offense with a new scheme. And you're only, what, six months into since when Robert and I and, and Jason Beck got on campus and, and started implementing that offense last spring or this past spring. Uh, So you're only so far into this. So the bye week is a chance for you to expand on that playbook a little bit and and take a couple of those next steps in terms of the plays and the offense as a whole. So maybe the whole week wasn't spent on on preparing for NC State. It was, you know, spent preparing for how you can expand the playbook and expand some looks and things like that. But I have to assume, I think it's safe to assume that a chunk of last week was spent preparing for NC State. And that preparation has a lot to do with preparing for Devin Leary. So now you're, you know, you're seven days into your preparation for NC State, and you've got the question mark that arises. So I think it's it's a difficult spot because you have been preparing for Leary, and that's been the mental preparation and the and the play prep whole approach preparation you've had this whole season, right? Because this has been on the docket, even though that Wagner game, you know, was two weeks ago. You're not preparing for Wagner to the fullest. Uh, you have yeah, NC State in mind saying. in that game. Uh, and now you've got a week to prepare for Jack Chambers, who you have very minimal footage on at NC State. Yes, you've got some Charleston Southern looks that you can throw in, but how different is his game at NC State with the different personnel and the jump in terms of, obviously, you're you're going from a low-level team to a top-tier Power 5 program right now and a top-15 team in the country. Uh, in NC State, and so it's it's a lot different what you can expect out of Jack Chambers. I think we were talking right before we hopped on and started recording. You're going to see a lot more RPOs. You're going to see a lot of that read option stuff, uh, and that's just the skill set that Chambers has. When you've got a guy as mobile as him, uh, he averaged 10 carries a game at Charleston Southern uh, over, I think it was 30-plus games guy, yeah. that he ended up playing with them. Uh, so he is going to run the football, and, and he is going to find gaps. There could be you know, just – a lot of read option stuff. It could be a quarterback draw. It can be things like that. But look for him to to want to move. And I think, as you were saying, you're going to need to look for the linebacking core to step up and, and play a solid game uh, in order to keep them in check. 
And the numbers on Jack Chambers before we take a break. Six for 14 this year. Um, actually, they played against his his old team, Charleston Southern, in their first game of the season. Um, oh, how about that? Yeah. Uh, he threw five. He completed five passes on 11 attempts in that game. Uh, in the Florida State game, he only threw one pass. It was an incompletion, uh, and he ran the ball seven times for 39 yards. Um, he is a guy that I think NC State is trying to make them. Dave Doran tried to make them sound more confident in Jack Chambers than I think they are, but that's just my hypothesis. He went and said, Jack's had 400-yard passing games before. He can throw the football. If we're going to get into a game and have to Mm. chuck it around, we feel great about him, but everybody's on deck as we get Devin ready to play. So uh, they're trying to make it sound like they're ready to go. I think Jack Chambers has a 400-yard game. Well, so let's not let's not it. throw that out like it's it's a recurring. Thing. It was <laughs> there was one 400 yard game. All right, I got to take a quick break and then we'll get back to it. Let's talk Bet Online. It's your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to Bet Online or use the mobile device. Or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Uh, talking NC State. So we talked Jack Chambers a bit. Mobile guy. Like Owen said, we're going to see some read options, some RPOs. He's had at least one 400-yard game in the past. Uh, but we don't know really if he's going to be able to do something even in the ballpark of that against a Power 5 defense that Syracuse uh, puts out there. Let's talk about the NC State defense for a second. This is a team that, like Syracuse, has a really, really solid defense. They have, uh, in recent years and this season, in terms of just scoring defense, they're 15th in the nation, uh, only averaging 15.7 points against them this year. That's pretty impressive considering some of the teams they have played. Uh, I think when you look at Syracuse's number on that, which is actually even more impressive than that of NC State, I believe Syracuse is tied for like ninth. Let me see. Um, They're whatever they are. I'll I'll find it. But Syracuse is, I think a lot of people are going to make the argument that Syracuse has played a lot more cupcake games. Uh, They are tied for ninth. Um, But NC State, they've played teams like Clemson, FSU. They've played Charleston Southern and and teams like that as well. So there's the argument to be made there too. But Regardless, two teams with very talented defenses going at it here. And like you said, defense might have won them the game against FSU. Yeah, 100%. And one thing that I, I stood out to me in that Florida State game is, is that they, the NC State defense got burnt a handful of times by Jordan Travis in that game, uh, Florida totally. State's quarterback, uh, and, and on the ground, not through the air which is not something traditional to the game that Jordan Travis plays. I'm um, looking at his game log right now from this season. He's only got one game above 23 yards. Uh, he ran for 23 yards on the ground against LSU to start the year, but he's got 0, 16, 4, and then he had 71, uh, excuse me, 31 yards against LSU, negative 10 against Louisville, 16, 2, and 108 yards against NC State on the ground. Uh, on seven attempts, he does have the virtue of a 71-yard rush against NC State to boost those stats a little bit. But I felt like as I was watching the highlights of that game and looking at it, that Jordan Travis was breaking out and, and being able to get a handful of first downs on the ground and have a lot of success because it was not something that NC State was as prepared for. And it caught them off guard a little bit, and it seemed like there was a lot of space for him to move. I'm not sure there's going to be as much space preparing for a guy like Schrader who is – you know, known to be hitting the ground and wanting to be a mobile quarterback and someone that can run and tuck at any point in time. But that is something that I think maybe could be exploitable for Syracuse as I watched that footage from uh, the Florida State game as something that that Syracuse could be able to take advantage of if, if Schrader can find a couple of opportunities like that because they did get burnt a handful of times by by Florida State and, and Jordan Travis. So that's something that I want to keep an eye out for, like what differences they have in terms of approach. Uh, are they going to spy Schrader a little bit more? Are they going to have that focus? And sort of how do you balance, you know, playing 
Gadsden and, and Courtney Jackson and whoever else is out wide uh, for for Syracuse and, and that receiving core with you're going to have to spy Schrader to some extent. And you've got to have some awareness of Sean Tucker at all times, whether that's popping out for a pass uh, or a wheel route or whatever that might be, or a screen pass or a rush of any capacity. That balance is something that I'm really interested to see how NC State approaches Syracuse with, um, because I think that it's going to be very indicative of maybe how Clemson will approach them the following week with an even better and stronger defense than NC State can prevent or present. And I'm just looking at the numbers here. NC State, they have three different guys on that defense that have multiple interceptions. Three guys that have two picks. They have nine interceptions as a team. That ties them for seventh in the country. Uh, So that defense has some stars on it. And I'm just looking at the numbers here. Um, they've just got a lot of guys who can make impacts. It's not like there's one guy who's necessarily standing above the less or above the rest, even though that we know that Drake Thomas and Peyton Wilson in that linebacking core are the two guys that you really need to look out for who are going to both stop uh, the pass and the run in certain situations. Uh, but it's a lot of guys. They have 14 guys with double digit tackles on this team. And like I said, they have six different guys who have intercepted a pass on this team. Aiden White has just been insane uh, in their secondary. He's defended six passes, two interceptions, one for six. Uh, He's 10 guys on this team have broken up a pass. So everybody is really putting in a good shift on defense for them. And it's going to be a really difficult game for Syracuse. And I think Babers and the rest of the coaching staff know that. So like you said, Owen, during this bye week, there have been recruiting efforts. There has been uh, what? how are they going to change the offense. But at the same time, they're going to have to talk about how are they going to really go out and beat this NC State defense. Because yeah. I think a lot of Syracuse fans right now are thinking, oh, their quarterback's not going to play? Okay, that's a win in the back. You're still playing one of the best defenses. If not, I mean, probably Clemson's better. But in the ACC, I think NC State is up there for – one of the best defenses there is. I mean, they have really been fantastic. uh, And maybe you want to talk about that whole competition difference and whatnot. And and I think there might be an argument for that, but still, you still have to go out there uh, and and make the plays. So NC State's defense is nothing to scoff at. And I think that Syracuse knows that. And of course we do too. I don't know what Syracuse is going to do, but if we get that same Schrader, who is going to run 12 yards backwards and take a sack or not throw the ball out of bounds and lose six yards on a play they didn't have to, Syracuse is not going to win this game. They're going to have to play smart. They're going to have to play as well as they have all year, and they're going to have to find Sean Tucker in space if they're going to win this game. Yeah, and and that was one of the things that that I was saying uh, on that podcast covering NC State football. Uh, It's a good listen, honestly. They they present NC State football information in a very like feasible way, uh, just because I think it it comes to their advantage in this situation that they are fans, uh, and so they have that sort of perspective. Uh, so it's toughy talk. If you want to check that out by any means, uh, get a look at their perspective on things and their sort of mentality going into uh, this game against Syracuse from NC State side. But one of the things that we talked about a little bit is. NC State has, and any team basically, has the key to success against the Syracuse offense, and it is to exploit the offensive line. Uh, You need to get pressure on Schrader because the decision-making can go out the door very quickly, and he can revert back to old tendencies. As much as the focus has been on making the better decisions and executing and, and doing the smart things, we've seen him this season better, albeit, but sometimes definitely falling back into full-on 2021 Schrader uh, the, the bad tendencies come out at an exponential rate under pressure. And the way the O-line has played for Syracuse for the majority of this season uh, leaves that vulnerable. And so you are going to need to protect Schrader and give him time. And that has to be the focus of this, you know, this week and the preparations for Syracuse because if Schrader cannot have time to pass, it is going to be very tough for Syracuse to get moving against a defense that is as solid as this Wolfpack defense. They're outstanding. They're very, very good. As you were saying, they have so many contributors, so many guys that can make those big plays. 
and so many guys that just consistently do what you're supposed to do. And that's sort of where I look at defenses and how when you get to the top tier of defenses, it's not star power. And yes, star power contributes, but it is top to bottom guys that do what they're supposed to do every play and don't make mistakes and execute when it comes down to executing. And that is what I feel like this NC State defense does. And, you know, to allude to the following week, that's what Clemson's defense does even more uh, with the added star power that, you know, NC State doesn't not have stars on that defensive side. Uh, but the star power on Clemson's defense is is far, I think, in my opinion, is above what you can see from the Wolfpack. This defense is a very, very telling test for Syracuse. And I think our Monday episode after this game, we could probably spend the entire time rifling through what playing against this defense has yeah, told us totally. in terms of the reality of this series. Absolutely. Offense. I think you're 100% correct in that. Uh, and you talk about the offensive line. I feel like coming into this year, the general consensus of the fan base and of the media was that Syracuse is finally out of the woods in terms of the offensive line. They went through three straight seasons in which the offensive line was a big issue. Of course, it was in Tommy DeVito's first year as a starter uh, in the one and 10 season. I mean, it was dreadful. And then last year, it was still a bit of an issue, but at least a lot better than it was. And I think coming into this year, we talked about it plenty of times where we thought and, and the, a lot of the other media members thought that this offensive line was going to be as good, if not better than the 2018 offensive line. People were having that conversation. And it yeah. has been nowhere close to what Sam Heckle and Coda Martin were able to do back in 2018. Um, Syracuse's offensive line right now is 102nd in the country in terms of sacks given up. 13 sacks allowed by this offensive line, and that's only in five games. A lot of the other teams uh, that are this low on the list only have or already have six games on the schedule. So that's mm, really and bad. That includes games um, against UConn and Wagner. Yeah, that totally. So really, you're looking at three games against real opponents, and you're down there. Uh, so Syracuse, you they, they, I mean, we've had this conversation for five straight games now, six straight weeks of the football season that they have to get it together on the offensive line. And as we all know, it's not just the sacks given up; it's the penalties. Penalties have been ruthless. Uh, Carlos Vettorello, I've said it once, I'll say it again. He is attempting the record for snap infractions slash false starts as a center. I don't I I would be willing to wager that he's close to it for a center. I mean it, it's crazy. I feel like every penalty is on him or Kalan Ellis. Uh so I mean we all know that they have to get it together and it's almost not worth saying at this point because it's just so obvious. But if they don't, the NC State defense, like you said, Owen, it, they're gonna take advantage like nobody else has so far against Syracuse this season. This is the best defense uh, they've played thus far, and I think you're 100% correct in saying that we can really evaluate uh, what it was like to play a defense this good, especially going into next week's Clemson game. Yeah, and I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm, I'll rattle a few off. You know, the questions, is Schrader made the strides that we thought he did? Uh, how can Tucker play against a top tier defense. Are these receivers as good as we think they are, or have they been virtues of playing lesser defenses? How bad is this offensive line? Uh, there are so many questions that will be answered in this game, and that's just talking on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, how does the new system work uh, against a top tier defense, right? When you're playing against a defense that is as good as NC State's, you're going to get those reality check questions answered very quickly. Uh, and I think even in a loss, you could see positives uh, and you can walk away from positives, even if you drop this game. Um, but obviously, if you win this game, you're going to see a few things that that are positives and, and definitely uh, some big moments. But if you get blown out in this game, I think that is a very worrisome reality check uh, for what this team is and what the the rest of the season might endure for Syracuse to go back to the O-line um, the sack breakdown there's two against Louisville three against UConn which is bad uh, two That's against nuts. Purdue <laughs> wow. and six six against Virginia yeah, so when you look at and obviously zero against Wagner uh, when you look at those numbers like the last two games you're averaging four sacks allowed per game you can't allow that pressure to happen. And that's not necessarily me talking about every pressure, right? Or a ball that's thrown away or 
uh, a, a poor decision made as a result of pressure or things like that. Uh, that's just pure sacks, right? Like you're you're getting Schrader flushed out of the pocket and having to throw on the run. Uh, I am not all too impressed with his throwing on the run so far. Uh, and it seems like we've gotten a little better, but sometimes we forget that you're allowed to throw the ball away outside the pocket, right? You don't need to fight to get to the negative two yard line. You can just flip the ball out of bounds. Yeah, I don't understand than, what he doesn't get about that. Like it, it makes sense. You're in the, you're outside the pocket. I feel like it's in the red zone too is where it gets even worse. Like you're, you're outside the pocket in the red zone, throw the ball 30 rows into the stands for all I care. Okay. It's not grounding, throw the ball away. Instead, you're going to either force something or you're, you're making a bad decision and you're trying to tuck the ball for a few yard loss. Like just throw the ball away. It's okay. That's the smart decision. And that's the decisions that you need to start seeing uh, and the decisions that you need to make if you're going to be competitive and, and have a chance to win this football game. Because those are decisions and plays that a defense like NC State's will exploit, and you will go back, and that will be the vibe of our Monday episode is, okay, let's list off the mistakes and how NC State was able to capitalize on them. Uh, it, it, and there are bountiful things. What I'm getting out of my discussion today is that, boy, will there be a lot to talk about on Monday. Uh, regardless of how this game goes, this will this Monday episode will be absolutely loaded uh, in terms of the realities yeah. that we have figured out about this team and the new discussions that we can have about the remainder of the season based on what we see on Saturday afternoon. I want to go back to penalties just yeah, for please. a second. Syracuse is one of eight teams that have committed 50-plus penalties this season. They are the only team within that group that has only played five games. Yes. I think that's Syracuse crazy. Syracuse leads the country in penalty minute or penalty yards. Uh, if you get rid of the, or they're eighth, I think they're eight, eighth worst in the country in penalty yards. And the seven teams worse than them have all played an extra game. Yeah. Um, I, so I think there's probably are, more now. I, it looks like unless, they have, they have I mean, 300. Because I, I checked that penalty Sunday. Yards. Oh, um, well, it looks like they have 362 penalty yards, and there are plenty of teams with 400. But Syracuse really? is in a bad spot in terms of penalties, regardless of that. Um, I'm looking it up. Ramble for Okay, you go ahead and look it up. I'll filibuster. Uh, penalties are brutal, man. And I feel like 97% of them happen on the offensive line. I don't know if everybody else feels that way, but it just seems like at least 8 out of 10 uh snaps or uh, the other way like one of 10 snaps is a penalty that's how i feel it's absolutely brutal um so syracuse has to clean up the penalties i don't think owen found the stat um did you he did sorry i had a i had a colleague jump in quickly uh it's okay they are oh god my stats wrong it's disregard it's okay okay disregard uh, well that's all uh, we still, have today it's still bad it's still yes, it bad. is still bad. It is still bad. Um, but that's all we got. Thank you for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen today and every day. Go get more in the ACC. Make Lockdown ACC your second listen today and every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Lockdown take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Lockdown ACC your second listen. I'm Matt Bonaparte. He is Owen Valentine. We will see you tomorrow. Hopefully we have a little bit of a revamped pregame or guys day before game day episode, our Friday episode. So get excited for that and we'll see you then. Oh yeah.